Hi guys, John from Paved in Stone. So, you've decided you want some hard landscaping. Top tip, top tip number one. First, most important thing, decide your budget. This is probably the hardest thing that you're gonna have to do when you're deciding on having some new hard landscaping, whether that's a patio or a driveway. Decide on your budget, all right? Landscaping isn't cheap, not when it's done properly, it's not cheap. So chances are you're looking at investing a few grand into your project. So number one, decide on what your budget is. Now that's gonna be dictated by a few different things. It could be the size of your project. You could go anywhere from 15, 20 meter patio up to a 100 meter patio. Obviously your price is gonna vary. That depends on the property that you're in. Think about materials that you wanna use. In my experience, porcelain's a little bit more expensive to install. It's a little bit slower. It means more specialist gear. Uh, and then certainly, you know, when you're looking at things like natural stone, you've got a massive spectrum as well. You've got entry level stone, you've got sawn stone, you've got things like granites, like marbles. So when you're starting to think about your budget, start to think about some of the materials that you want to try and work with. Have a look online, try to get some prices per meter squared on what those materials are. And you can start to gauge what your final cost might be. I appreciate it's difficult. Some of you might have had landscaping work before, some of you haven't. So it's kind of a bit difficult, but start doing your research decide on your budget, decide on what material you want to use, then you can move on to the next step. Cheers. Hi guys, John from Paved in Stone. So you're looking for some hard landscaping. Top tip number two. Uh, we just had a look at top tip number one. We talked about your budget. When you're going on and you're looking at products that you want to work with, uh, you're going to start to get a good idea of the price per meter perhaps for your project um, so for argument's sake let's say you're looking at a natural natural stone you're looking at something that's around about 30 pounds a meter from that you can now start to gauge the overall cost of your project depending on your size your product is going to make up between 20 and 30 percent of your overall budget so you should be able to get a pretty clear idea now of what your budget is starting to look like so your next step now is to start looking for landscapers around you can't stress this enough don't just put something on social media looking for recommendations all you're going to get is all of that builder's friends that landscaper's friends very rarely are you actually getting proper recommendations from customers that have used them so avoid that um, depending on the size of your project if it's just a small little job say it's around about 10 15 meters squared well, you might be better off looking for somebody that's a bit more of a handyman. Um, so you can look at sites like My Builder and Checker Trade. They're good for the small end type of works, all right? Anything that's a little bit bigger, perhaps needs a little bit more specialist attention, um, please don't go onto those builders and uh, My Builders and Checker Trades, all right? They are a little bit of throwing you into the, into the lion's pit. So my advice would be to check out your social media. These days, any reputable company is gonna have a well-maintained social media site. They're gonna have pictures of their work. And that's where you can start to gauge of those people that are local to you, which ones suit the style of project that you wanna do. For our argument's sake, if you go on and you look at my, prof my Facebook profile on Paved in Stone, you'll see we like to work with a lot of natural stone. We like to put a lot of curves and things like that into our sort of work. That's our style. That's what we enjoy. Somebody else has got a lot of porcelain. It's all very straight lines. It's all really clean. That's their style. Horses the courses. Not all landscapers are the same. So just spend a bit of time researching these guys and girls that are around in your area. The next thing you want to do, once you've started to find a few that you've got some pictures and some projects that they've done that you like, you want to start looking into, well, what have they got behind them? Is there anything they've got any accreditation? Um, that can be things like the Marshall's Register, which we're a part of, uh, Bradstone Assured Scheme, Brett, in, uh, Brett Installer Scheme. Um, are they members of the APL, the Association of Professional Landscaping? Maybe they're award winners. If you're looking for something that's a bit more involved in design, you can have a look and find your award winners and see you know, what they've got to offer. Once you've had a look at that, you're starting to come up now with a short list of guys and girls, sorry, that you like, trades that you like, that you want to talk to. So now you can start thinking about, right, let's have a look at their reviews. Make sure the reviews tie in, that it's not just a bunch of friends. And you're starting to build up a picture now of the potential trade that you're gonna work with, starting to build up an idea of what they've got to offer you. So that's our top tip number two. Spend some time, research your, uh, your potential trades within your area, put the legwork in, then you're ready to start making some phone calls. That's top.
Top tip number three, you're looking for a hard landscaper, so you've decided your budget. You've got a short list now of contractors near you that you like the look of and that you want to talk to. So next thing is to pick up the phone, send an email. Um, most of us these days, we're, we're quite happy with emails, text message, whatever. Let's start the ball rolling now and let's get some people around to have a look at your project. When they do come around and you start to get some calls, some of us are now charging for consultation. All right, Don't let that put you off. It's going to be a nominal fee. Personally, we charge £60 and we'll come out and we'll have a look and we'll give you a full package of everything that you can expect. Don't be put off if someone wants to charge. Similarly, a lot of people don't charge uh, and that's fine too. Do your research, decide what you're prepared to do. Don't forget, you're going to be spending thousands of pounds on this project, so a few quid just to get it started to make sure you've got all the right information. It's got to be a sensible investment there. Once they start coming round, We've got, I'll put it in my in my link, I've got some checkpoints that you should be asking your contractor for when they come around and they're discussing the job with you. Some other key things that you want to be thinking about, uh, thinking about asking when they arrive is, do they work to a contract? Does that quote become their contract? How detailed is that quote going to be? What sort of information would you like to see in there? Now, a lot of us, we're not going to itemise the, the individual costs of your quote, just because there's far too many moving parts. I mean, it'd, it'd be an endless list. Um, I think a more sensible way is to uh, go into detail and specify the work that you're expecting to get. If that can come along with maybe just a sketch or some people will do computer rendered images and whatnot, that's a really great visual aid for the expectation of what you've got. So things to think about, uh, do they work to a contract? Do they know what a CDM is? All right, really important one, that one, a CDM. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I'll put a little description in there and we'll talk about that in future videos. Um, and then for 2023, a really, really important one, I can't stress this enough, and we certainly need to update a lot of our information about it. Ask them, do you know about BS 7533? That is the British standards that now directly relate to us guys working in people's gardens, all right? Really got to be clued up on that. And if you as a customer, you get a yes to all those questions. Yes, we use a contract. Yes, we use a CDM. Yes, we know what BS 7533 states. Chances are you've got yourself a good contractor and you ought to see the process through with them, all right? I normally recommend you get two, maybe three quotes. You don't need to go mad with it and get any more than that reasonably. Um, and you'll find there's always gonna be some price differences, okay? Everybody's business has got different overheads, different costs. Um, but what you're trying to find as a customer is you're trying to find the kind of a price that you're happy that's within your budget and you want that contractor to do the work because remember it's a two-way street us as contractors we're trusting you as a customer that we can come in and do the job that we told you to do and we're trusting that you're going to pay us you as a customer you're trusting that we're going to do the job the way we've told you we're going to do the job which is compliant with bs7533 so that's our top tip number three Anything else beyond that point, as I say, I'll put a, a link in the description for some useful tips that we've put on uh, for things that you can expect at that quote stage. Um, and we'll certainly, we'll do some more videos uh, at a later date where we explore you know, everything that's involved in landscaping in a little bit more detail. But hopefully these three top tips will be enough to get you going and get yourself a good trade. Cheers.